Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an expert interview. You are going to learn how exactly to scale your e-com business in 2021 and beyond because this is going to be evergreen. You will be able to review this at any point in time to sharpen your skills and take your e-com game to the next level. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we have the honor of speaking with Matt Schmidt. And uh, Matt, you've been doing so much incredible work with us so far here. Um, really just helping to uh, bring this incubator to the next level on, on so many so many different levels. Um, and so, you know, I'm so glad that we get to do this today. Specifically, we're going to be talking about within the scaling your e-com biz in 2021, we're going to be talking about one, finding the right products, two, finding your customer, and three, finding your traffic. So I'm going to be quiet now, Matt. I'd love to hear your story and then uh, take it away, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Happy to be here. Uh, and thank you for having me on this call. I'm super excited to chat with you today. So um, I have a, a an interesting story. Um, but I think it's very similar to maybe a lot of people on this call. Um, I came out of college in the Great Recession, um, not too dissimilar time than right now, right for a lot of people. Um, I couldn't get a job I had an information technology degree. And those were disappearing. Uh, as, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was not the right time to be in the information technology field. Came home, was uh, in my parents' basement, um, had a girl I wanted to marry, was applying to literally everything I could find uh, back then, and um, it was just getting rejected. Uh, I had one interview in five months, um, which is a long time to live in your parents' basement uh, when you want to move out, right? Um, and, um, you know, I got rejected for that, and the guy was... Um, he had been in the business for 30 years and he was taking an intro level job, right? I just like bringing that out there for people because I know a lot of people, um, get into this business and get started with their own company because either they're not happy with where they're at or, um, they're in a similar situation, especially right now, uh, in our world, uh, as you know, that I was in back then. So I started looking for ways of creating, my own income, right? I started building websites. I, was, I have an IT degree. I can build a website. Um, you know, ranking it was probably, I mean, I don't know how it is now, but it was pretty hard back then. Um, monetizing it was hard. Found my way into paid traffic and, um, you know, started running affiliate offers and, and things like that. Uh, this is back in still in 2009. Um, so a little over 10 years now. Um, and then I was one of the earliest people on Teespring you know, through a mentor of mine, got me started there, um, started finding my footing a whole lot there. Um, worked my way out of my parents' basement into a house, in part because of, um, you know, I got a job. But at the same time, I had an itch to do a little bit more. Um, so I'd come home from my job and, and still work on this affiliate offer game, this Teespring game, whatever I had running at the time, and really hit it my stride. Um, the closer I got to, you know, marry my, my now wife, um, and just coming home and, and I found myself burning the candle at both ends, right? I was getting a lot of, uh, traction on the, my own business, but I was always scared to take that next step. Um, and I think a lot of people are, that, are, are, are scared of doing that too, because you feel like there's some sort of certainty, um, in the paycheck that comes every two weeks, uh, at a job. So my wife challenged me back then, um, and, um, said, you know, if you can hit it, uh, you know, consistently for, um, X period of time you know, then I'm all, I'm on board. I'm, I'm behind you. So we did that. Um, and I left my corporate job a little over six years ago now. And, uh, which is crazy time flies. Um, but, uh, we, it, we left that corporate world and started some Shopify stores. And I met, uh, Lowell not too, um, far off of that around that same time. And, you know, came up with him in this industry of, you know, drop shipping and print on demand and, and just seeing this, uh, industry, you know, mature over time, I, I always laugh about thinking about, you know, if you're familiar with the print on demand side of things, all we had was a t shirt originally, and you couldn't even sell it in ads, you had to like grow your Facebook page and, and drive traffic there and build a community, which, you know, sounds great, we should we should still be doing that stuff. But it was way easier back then, like if you had a group or a page, you posted one thing and boom, it hit everybody on that page, right now it's like, all right, you might hit like a percentage of that. So that it's a pay to play sort of thing on Facebook now. So it was good times back then. But a lot of the, so the same concepts applied. So 
you know, I've had a lot of success on Shopify, relatively speaking. Um, you know, I, I, it, it, a lot of people are way beyond me and um, I'm here to help a lot of people who are just getting started like I was a couple of years ago. And, you know, we recently sold a company that was on pace to do 20 million this year. Um, and it's kind of crazy to think about, you know, that first sale that you got all the way up to that. Um, it, it's been a pretty cool and wild ride. That's amazing. So it, yeah. it seems like you really have an interesting perspective of one getting thrust into this world by necessity. I mean, you, right. you literally had to in order to be able to get to where you wanted to go uh, through through the recession and whatnot. And from there, it seems like you've really built a a powerful body of knowledge, and you've gained a lot of experience. You've gained a lot of insight. Uh, well, you've really earned it because, uh, you know, you've, you've built multiple stores. You really came up through the print on demand industry. And, you know, now you've, now you've had an exit for a, for a eight figure business from an eight figure business, which is just incredible. So needless to say, you know what you're talking about. You've had a lot of experience, a lot of insight from multiple different angles and, um, yeah, this is going to be exciting. So I uh, would love to just hand it over to you so we can talk about the three keys to scaling our e-com business in 2021 and beyond? Yeah, I think um, if we're going to talk about a business in 2021, I think the major thing is we can't ignore what happened in 2020, right? We had a world changing event from multiple standpoints, right? Um, E-commerce has had a massive growth in this year. Um, I forget what the exactly the chart was, but it's like years of growth within this, you know, certain amount of time, whatever it's been nine months or 40 years or whatever it feels like uh, in this COVID life we are in here. But uh, the interesting thing is, guys, that it, it has, if you look at it, presented a lot of opportunities for a business owner, right? Um, we have to adjust and make sure that we're understanding what the market is doing right now and what the market wants. Um, and a couple of aspects of that, right? If, and if I'm going to say, you know, we need to find our product, there is a reason that I started with that, right? This event has brought a lot of people to realizing maybe I need to support local business. Maybe I need to order from, you know, if you're an American or from Canadian from your country. But there's also something there that I think, you know, the Amazon culture is continuing to thrive. Target, Walmart, they want people to deliver products quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker, quicker. And a lot of this growth of these people who are now ordering online that weren't before don't have any idea that you're, you're, you know, they don't, they're not going to accept a 30 day window for drop shipping. They're not going to maybe even understand the print on demand, though, although most print on demand companies are, you know, t shirts and apparel. So they're, they're, they're delivering pretty quickly. But the expectation is growing to where you need to deliver quicker and quicker, right? So how do we do that? Well, a lot of the guys, um, you know, that I've seen and myself included, we're starting to shift over to products that are made in the country that you are mostly shipping it to, right? And that gets it there way faster. So when you're looking for products that you're going to add, I think you need to keep that into perspective. Um, you know, Dropify has been a great resource for people to find great products and get them delivered, right? But we need to adjust with what the market is saying. And I think a lot of, again, a lot of this growth is uh, and e-commerce is saying like, hey, I ordered from the guy down the street and it got delivered in the next day. Like, so, you know, you need to be as quick as you possibly can because that's what the customer is expecting. So I always talk about two things with um, finding your products, but I think I'm going to start including that third thing, which is finding a product that can deliver it as quickly as possible. But the two things I always talk about are social proof and sales proof, right? We live in, you know, a lot of you probably, um, maybe if you're brand new, you're going to be told you need to advertise on Facebook. If you're more experienced, you probably advertise on Facebook. But there's other sites coming up, Pinterest, TikTok, all these other guys are coming up too, where social proof is huge, right? the engagement that your product is getting online that has been from my early days up till right now one of the most important things that you could possibly have right is as proof that this product is socially engageable a it's proof and you know it's it's basically market research for you um telling you that the market is responding right you don't you're not going to get 30,000 likes on something if it's not you know 
engaging to that that target audience, right? B, it's telling you somebody's probably putting some money behind it. Like I said earlier in this call, it's pay to play on Facebook now. You might get like, even on a really big page, I have a page of, you know, 300,000 people. If I post something on there, I might get, you know, a thousand, a couple thousand likes, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. You're running ads behind that. And more than likely that ad is profitable, right? So when you're doing kind of research into your niche and you're going out and you're looking for competition, that's a good indication that this product is welcomed and the market wants it. So when you're doing kind of your market research, kind of note that. Um, easiest way to do that is just follow all the pages in your niche. And then all of a sudden those ads are going to start coming uh, into your newsfeed, right? And pay attention to the ones that are really, really successful. I'm not a big advocate of when you're starting a business to, or even, you know, being a medium sized company of reinventing the wheel, right? So most businesses are created as some kind of improvement. You're either you're like a like product to something you saw, or you're an improvement upon that product, right? Holds true all the time. Um, so or a different take on that product too, which I should mention. So that's the kind of thing I look for when I'm looking for social engagement. If I'm entering a new niche, I'm looking for a product, and can I improve upon that product, right? And so social engagement's a really big aspect of that. Sales proof is just what it sounds like. Obviously, sales are good, right? So if there's a product with 10,000 sales on it, that's a pretty good product, right? I'm just throwing out arbitrary numbers too, by the way. Uh, it's not like, don't quote me on that exact number. Um, but it's hard to see the sales proof a lot of the time, right? That's not readily available information on Amazon or Etsy. So what do we do? Well, we look for reviews, right? Um, I always joke with my wife that we probably get an Amazon package every day at our doorstep. But I don't think that I have left a single review on any of those Amazon products, right? Um, maybe that's just me. But reviews, they only come in for a fraction of the people who actually order the product. Uh, so if you have a product with 10,000 reviews, there's a good chance that that has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sales, right? We're talking about multiples of five, 10, even, even more uh, people who actually sold it versus who had left a review for it. So that's another key indication. And then, like I said, to wrap that third part up, can you find something that's made in the USA? You know, Dropify is making some big moves in that area to where you can have products that are made in the USA. Why is that such a good thing? Well, it's just, it's like I said, it's going to be, or it's going to be shipped faster. Um, a lot of the times it's going to make, you know, people are going to trust that as a quality product. Um, if you're going to do something like the supplements or th something like that, there's regulations here that aren't necessarily in other countries and things like that. So those are important things for people, especially in supplements when you're ingesting something or putting something on your body that people want uh, and require pretty much um, to have. So that's, that's, if you can mix all three of those or two, or, definitely two of them, you know, social proof or sales proof, but definitely that third, you're going to find a really good product. And like I said, it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about understanding what the market um, is. I think Ryan Moran said it on his podcast the other day. He was talking about how you got to put the vision first and then the product can help exceed the vision. Don't put the product in front and the vision on the back of it, right? Um, I think if you can pay attention to that, I, I, I knew that in my head, but when he said that, it was a really big takeaway of that you're always putting the vision in front of it, right? And the print on the man market, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. Print on the man gets sold to people who are in that niche and they want to express themselves. So you're selling to people who want to env you know, envision the scenario where they get to talk about their niche, they get to talk about their dog or whatever you're selling, you know, and they get to express themselves out to the rest of the world. And then the product backs that up. So that's my big wrap up uh, in that section is making sure that you're, you're looking for those indications, understanding your market, and then try to deliver in a, you know, the fastest delivery you possibly can for your product. Um, and that'll help that pillar, uh, that key indicator um, really work for you. This is brilliant. So we're really focusing here on social sales and shipping speed. The, yeah. the triple S technique here. And what's beautiful about where we are with technology is these things are not that difficult to find with literally the most basic efforts when it comes to research. So when it comes to yeah. social, especially on Facebook, they literally have what's called the Facebook 
template or uh, I'm sorry, not Facebook template, the Facebook library, where mm. once you go through and like you were saying, find the pages that are in your niche, you don't have to wait for them to advertise to you. You could go type in those pages in the, the Facebook ads library and it will show you all the ads that they're running and Even it better. will show you how long those ads have been up and running. And the beauty of that is people aren't going to spend money on ads that don't work unless they're just dumb. We don't want to, we don't want to follow them, but the ones that have been spending big money on ads, big money, meaning tons of social engagements, the ads have been going for a very long time. Then, you know, this is a profitable ad. It's a profitable ad. And so you can, you can take inspiration from that and not reinvent the wheel. So that is a killer on social proof. Very easy to find that out. As far as sales go, again, there are tons of tools. Amazon has a bestseller ranking. Etsy has a bestseller icon or tab, and they'll tell you how many have been sold of this thing. Um, something like an AliExpress will tell you how many products or units have actually been sold there. And then there is a, a tool that you might have to dig a little bit for, but it, on eBay where it'll tell you something similar. And you know, you may not want to sell those products, all the products there. You may want to have your own custom product, but still go research people who are your competitors or who are in at least some sort of similar or parallel niche to where you have some sort of research to go off of and you're not just shooting in the dark. And then shipping speeds, like you were saying, you know, first of all, the the private label on demand plan, um, that just takes care of it, you know, one to three day shipping times. Uh, but on top of that, um, you know, when you are working with a supplier, just be upfront with them from the beginning. Like, Hey, if you can't beat Amazon, you're not going to earn our business and, and set that expectation from the beginning. And then you're good to go. So Matt, I thought you brought up some really, really great points there. Yeah. Yeah. It, I ordered something from the private label on demand and I got a text message that it shipped, uh, 30 minutes after I ordered it. And then it arrived the next day. <laughs> I was, I was, I've talked, I texted a little while. I'm like, this is ridiculous, dude. That is so fast. Uh, I'm like, is it coming from down the street or something like that? Or like, how did that get here? So yeah, they I have agree. little drones flying it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa, it shipped already. I mean, I, it, like I said, like I've been in this game for a very long time. Uh, that That is for on-demand products to ship that quickly is it blows my mind. So it, it, it you know, we're, we, the industry has come such a long way. It's an exciting time um, to be, it's exciting time to be in there when I got in there, but it's really excited about the future of the, and, and seeing the things that I got um, going on. Agreed. Agreed. So we talked about finding your product. Let's move on to finding your customers. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about a lot of the areas that you're going to go ahead and look um, your customers are going to be in a lot of different areas. Right. Um, but I really think that Facebook is the perfect place for you to start, um, especially if you do the print on demand angle, uh, because the best print on demand uh, labels or, or shirts or mugs or whatever you're gonna do, no one's gonna be necessarily searching for them, right? So what we want to do is be on a platform where A, the targeting is, it's like space age technology uh, versus uh, other platforms that are out there. Um, and there's just, I mean, it was a 2 billion people now. So, but if you, in the United States, it's like 200 million, 230 million. Uh, and so the, the audience is massive, right? It's got basically everybody. It's got space age technology. Um, and it's the perfect platform to disrupt people from what they are doing. Knowing that people on Facebook are kind of mindlessly scrolling, the best print on demand products are always going to be the ones that are very outspoken, right? They want to have the very abrupt, even to this day, people are very much like, I had no idea that I could be targeted with this or, and it, it, it kind of creeps people out too sometimes, but like, if you can hit them so smack in the face, the best example is like, I used to sell a shirt that said, I'm a, uh, I'm a mom who likes to drink wine and pet my dog. And they're like, how did you get that precise? And it was, oh, it's like, well, Facebook can let you do that. And there's millions of people that fit that little group. And you can put something in front of them that they would never be like, I'm going to get that shirt. But if you have that on social media, it's going to snap them and be like, whoa, like that's exactly who I am. And I'm going to go buy that right now. So the private label on demand products, that same opportunity is there on a brand new product that I've never had before. 
Um, there's lots of examples that I think that they're going to be putting out if they haven't already uh, of showing how this can be done, but it should get your creative juices flowing on any product um, of how you can do that. But the, so that's what social media is built for is that engagement, right? So if you have a product like print on demand, you're going to get engagement on your ad if you do it correctly. And the secret is for Facebook traffic uh, is getting that right is getting that engagement because that's going to lower the cost of your ads. So if you can lower the cost of your ads, obviously, you can have a better margin or hopefully a better ROI for the people who are coming to your site. So in terms of going out and finding your customers, um, that's where I would say in terms of the traffic where, where I would go. But understand that like your, your, your customers are everywhere, right? I see people walking down the street with my products on, right? So in, in my, in my uh, neighborhood and in my city all the time. Uh, so where do they go? Where do they congregate? Where do they go online? That's a very big um, step that you can take in your research to not only finding them to give you interest on Facebook to target, right? But also understanding them because they will, people like to buy from one of their own, right? Think of the small business mentality, right? A lot of small businesses work in that, that space, right? And you are a small business. They work for in the space where the guy, I can go into a guy and say, you know, have a conversation back and forth about my problem. And he's the guy with the fix, right? Think about your car problems or like, a, like a going into Lowe's or going into like, that's not a small business, but you know what I mean? That kind of handyman shop, that kind of stuff. People like buying from one of their own, one of their communities. And you can amplify that uh, by just understanding who those people are, uh, by going to where they go. So every kind of you know, niche is different. Um, but I think, you know, if you think it through a little bit, you can start to get an understanding. Um, and then Facebook has a tool called the Audience Insights tool that if you can grab maybe like a magazine or a community or one of those things, you can plug that in there. And then that, and it's a free tool, by the way. Um, and, and that will open up a whole realm of understanding for you because Facebook, as we all know, has data on everybody right? And understanding of everybody. So you plug that in there, it's going to give you not only an understanding of that niche, but understanding of that niche on Facebook. And then you can start getting into your understanding, right? So the Oh, my God, I didn't realize it's 65% female. Uh, and it's 35 and above. Well, to me, that sounds like tailoring my product to cater to females who are 35 and above, right? or in my niche and my messaging. And that can help exponentially grow your store as well. I love that. So I want to really touch on uh, on a few things that you said. Uh, I love this term of space age technology when it comes to your ability to, to really target people. And, you know, for those who have been on Facebook and are a little bit more familiar with the, the Facebook ads platform, I would highly, highly suggest either continuing to use or starting to use pixels and custom audiences, oh, yeah. because what you can do is you can put tracking codes from Facebook onto your website, and they have lots of tutorials and whatnot to make it easy for you. And then you can say, okay, whenever somebody lands on this thank you page, for example, uh, they are counted as a new customer. That That is a purchase. And so you can then tell Facebook, I want you to go out and find me more purchases. So you can literally turn Facebook and the brilliant algorithm that has had hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue pumped through it to train it, go like a heat seeking missile and find you new customers. And so let Facebook do the, the heavy lifting. And for those of you who aren't as familiar with Facebook, uh, go learn about that. Go figure it out. Facebook has a lot of really easy um, tutorials to follow to just install it, but make sure you're using data and you're leveraging the algorithms. And it's not just Facebook. All the big ones are copying them. So you have you know, your Google tracking code with Google Analytics. You have your uh, Pinterest tracking code. You have your TikTok tracking code. You have all these different pixels that you can put into your website and you can let their algorithms do the hard work for you to find those customers. And like you were saying, Matt, it's so important. So that's one side. You know, I want to jump to, to the next thought here um, to make sure that when you are um, going out there and you're finding where your customers are, one thing that almost nobody's doing, like almost nobody's doing at all is uh, utilizing this idea of a dream 100. So what is this? Well, 
if you sit down and think, where are all of my customers? There might be a hundred different communities where those those people are. So let's let's stick with uh, the you know a, a pet example. So maybe there is a blog about dogs, and then maybe there's a newsletter about dogs, and a magazine, and a TV show, so on and so forth. What almost nobody's doing is going out there researching where all of those communities are, putting them in a list, and uh, you know for your dream 100, making a list of about 100 people, not that hard, or, or 100 organizations. Reach out to them and do some sort of co-marketing where you go out to them and you say, hey, you have a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million people who desperately need my product. They desperately need my my supplement. They desperately need this, uh, whatever it is that you're selling. Why don't we work together to help them solve all of their problems? So the individual that you're working with, your partner, your part of your dream 100, they can help solve a need and you might want to uh, make a deal with them to where they get some revenue and you immediately get the opportunity to market to a bajillion of your ideal customers. So almost nobody's doing that. And that doesn't cost any money. It just takes a little bit of time. So you can go the paid route. You can go the, let me build a partnership and absolutely bring the thunder route. And the, the possibilities are infinite. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Um, one of my earliest strategies was partnering with um, a charity in the dog niche. Um, it was a lab. I, I got a labrador about four feet away from me, uh, and he. Uh, when I did that, you know, that I realized that a that market was very underserved. Right um, at that time, it was a newer breed, um, and they were just growing. There was no shirts or nothing around there. So I partnered with a charity because I'm a huge I'm a huge dog advocate. We give to charities every year for um, you know the the chair uh, the uh, rescue facility here in St. Louis, uh, one of them. And um, I was like, I'll partner with this Labradoodle charity, um, and if they can in their Facebook group sell it with authority, right? Because they're selling it to their people that they've already built up authority, which is a very very important aspect of that. I partnered with them, and then you know they started selling and they started pushing and they were basically you know, my influencer before there was a word for influencer um, back in the day. So um, yeah, I 100% agree. That's an awesome way of doing it too. And that just furthers you into the community as well, which again, people want to buy from one of their own. So they, that was a very successful early way of doing it because they, they knew they were not only supporting the cause, but they were talking to somebody who was just like them that had a labradoodle, had the same issues, had the same um, wants and needs and things like that. Um, so very great point. Yeah, hundred percent. So I feel like we got a little bit out of order here. Um, we talked about our uh, product and then we actually talked a lot about traffic, but yeah. uh, so I want to, I want to switch it and I want to talk about customer third. Um, and let's, you know, let's really dive into like who our customers are. How do we understand who our true best customers really are? Uh, and, and, you know, I'd love to hear more of your expertise on that. Yeah, you're right. We did kind of go a little bit out of order, but it does, you know, the important thing is that it all does kind of blend together on some levels, right? Um, because you need to be aware of each one of these things. And if you do, um, you'll have the most success, right? It's not just about knowing. I, I always say if you have the perfect targeting, perfect ad, but the shit product, excuse my French, uh, it will uh, not sell, right? Even though you had the best ad in the world. So you got to pay attention everywhere in between on these things and make sure that you have a full circle. So um, in terms of customer, right? I've, one thing I talk about in the incubator a lot is going out and I already mentioned it on this call is not in reinventing the wheel. So what does that mean when you're selling products? Well, you might have a product that's already similar to you, at least very close to you in the market. And what I like doing is going out to the big platforms, right? So if you were going to follow the dog example, PetSmart, um, is a huge company, Petco. Um, and then Amazon is just everything, right? So Amazon goes there, Walmart. And what do we do on these sites? Well, we, we like finding the listing very similar to what our product is, or, or, you know, in some cases, it'd be hundreds of them. Um, and then reading the reviews, right? Understanding what those reviews are saying, um, understanding what their complaints are, right? Not don't read the maybe not read the five star, read the one star, read the two stars, see what people's issues are, and then if can you improve upon the product in some way? Um, and in my, you might be thinking like I can't do that in the print on demand world. Well, like yes you can, right? So 
Um, one of the examples is, is if you go to a print on demand place and they said, that, oh, the reviews are the, the wash, it's coming off in the wash and right and doing stuff like that, then have better ink or work with somebody who prints a better quality shirt or have a or like if it's too tight, well, adjust the shirts, figure out which one that guy's selling and don't sell that one because obviously the market's telling you that the shirt's too tight. And then you can do this on infinite. If you're doing drop uh, drop provides program with, um, you know, anything off of AliExpress or whatever, um, it's endless with it. People, you know, have complaints about a product and then find either find the product that's selling the improvement or improve upon it yourself. Right. Um, but also realize that those people are your potential customers, right? You want to have uh, a potential sale from anybody. If I have a store, this is why I'm not really afraid of competition. If I have a store that has a 4% conversion rate, that means I have 96% of the market out there that I still need to convert, right? So when I'm going out and I'm looking at my competition, I realize that if that store has 4% conversion rate, the 96% of the market has either yet to buy it from him or chosen not to. And so what can I do to close that gap? And that's where those reviews come in. Um, that's where coming, you know, looking through the different marketplaces, we're having the big, um, you know, you obviously know that people are buying on Amazon, it's like 70 cents out of every dollar, right? Online. So um, there's endless Shopify stores in almost every niche. Understand where your customers are buying from, and then that's where you will be potentially going. Your customer is on the platform I already told you about, Facebook. You just need to put a, a good quality product in front of them. And then, yeah, we, we had kind of talked about traffic outside of that. That's going to help lead you into... Um, if I could wrap this up is we talked about how to get the targeting or your traffic, right? Even if you didn't do that, we'd talk about freeways in the incubator as well. But even if you were going to do free or paid, you need to understand those pitfalls that your product potentially has, um, either prove upon them or the hurdles that are going to keep somebody from buying, because those are two different things. And you need to make sure that your marketing is taking care of those as well. So it's not just about maybe finding your customer, but understanding your customer, that's super important now more than ever. Um, because I, I think, you know, with this growth, to bring it back to the growth that we've had and the exciting going forward, there's more people entering the market than there ever has been, right? More stores are popping up, more people like me are teaching others how to do this. I'm not afraid of competition because I'm always gonna be on top of my competition in terms of, you know, objection, overcoming, improving upon the product, having a faster shipping time and offering something that somebody else is just not willing to offer because they won't take the risk or they won't, do, you know, whatever. Uh, and making sure that I am understanding what my customer wants and object and overcoming those objections. Um, because if they, to bring it back to the growth, they're not going to buy from you again. There's all these people on the, platform now on, on Facebook, on Google, on Amazon, there's competition more than ever. So you really got to stand out in 2021. If you want to make those sales, not just the first time, but the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, it's easier. They always say it's easier to make the second sale than it is the first sale, right? And, and for that person, but you have to make sure that you're delivering a quality product if you ever want a chance at that second sale. Um, and all the things we talked about today will help ensure that second sale comes along, especially, I mean, look what's coming up at the time we're recording this, I got black Friday within three days, right? Uh, right. Three days. Yeah. So black Friday is not a time that I run a ton of ads. Like a lot of people talk, what's your ad strategy for black Friday? I sell to the people that have already been buying from me for the past year. Right. I'm hitting those guys as much as I possibly can because those are my loyal customers. And I build up, I, you know, my focus throughout the year, even if I have to break even, is pushing towards making sure they're on some kind of subscribe list, SMS, email, um, per, hopefully purchase list. And then I'm selling to them because I know they're going to buy from me again because I'm delivering a quality product. And then I don't have to play in the crazy Black Friday ad schemes. Yes, we're going to be running ads. Yes, we're going to spend a lot of money. But I know the majority of my, my profit is going to come from those second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and more. I got, you know, there's people that buy from us 20, 30 times. Um, and those are the people that are going to cost me the least because I don't have to pay on the traffic uh, yet again. So, yeah, I think that's, I mean, if you can focus on that, they all sort of kind of fall into each other, right? 
um, and it's going to help you accelerate. And it's gonna, if you do the things that your competition is not willing to do, that's how you're going to win going forward. You know, most people, I, I still get ads of people who aren't completing their Shopify store. They don't have a homepage banner. They don't have an about us page. The second most visited site uh, page on my site is the about us page, right? Product page. And then they go over to the about us because they want to learn who we, I am or, and they're buying from one of their own, right? Like I told you about. Then they go to the homepage where there's going to be offers and engagements and, and bundles and special deals and things like that where, you know, people are going to start to feel comfortable from you. They need to feel comfortable from you. But then on the flip side of that, they need to have a good experience when a product gets delivered. Is it, you know, is the labeling good? Is the box good? Was it delivered in a good amount of time? Right? Old things that are uh, talked about inside the incubator with the products that we're going to offer there. Uh, and that's, uh, and, and promote there. And that's the kind of thing that you want to focus on going forward, not just in 2021, but into the future for years, because it's only going to be more demanded as more and more people buy from uh, e-commerce websites. Matt, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, you know, I, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on and really breaking down for us these three pillars of scaling our e-com businesses in 2021 and beyond. Um, and just a, a quick recap of what we covered. We've talked about one, um, finding our product. Two, we've talked about finding our traffic and three we've talked about finding our customers and again like you said uh you know brilliantly they all really lead into each other because if you if you you know you have a great product chances are you've researched and you figured out who's buying it and where they're buying it and if yeah. you're looking to find traffic then you're figuring out well who are the people that comprise the traffic and where do i get that traffic right. and so on and so forth. So it's, you know, it, it really does all blend together, but I love how you siloed those three things. Um, again, uh, tremendously appreciative of your time. Uh, thank you for everything that you are doing for uh, everybody who's who's a part of this brilliant incubator program. So thank you so very much. And um, yeah, I, uh, I'm so glad you came on. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you for everybody who uh, took a chance to uh, listen to me ramble for uh, what, 30 minutes or so. So I uh, hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving and uh, I'll talk to you later. Great. Thank you.